this one from Charlie. It was what would happen if a guy with the shakes used the men's room. <laughs> Look at those guys hiding in the stall. Actually, for you women, this is what it looks like in a men's room anytime you visit. And here's a, uh, an anti-Semitic cartoon uh, by Charlie that I love as a Semite. <laughs> It's a very sophisticated cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to a Jewish book festival to show work in a week or so, and really? I can't wait to show this cartoon. Yeah. By the way, it's true. Uh, three Jews, four mm -hmm. opinions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this cartoon from M.K. Brown. Yeah. No, why do we look crazy? Amazingly talented. Amazingly talented, M.K. Brown. I have to say, of, of, all, of all the uh, illustrators, I think M.K. Brown was the one who had the corner on, don't you think, on a sort of certain timeless, very modern Dada. I mean, look mm -hmm. at that. The white girl twist. <laughs> it's so out there. And if you go to M.K. Brown's house, and she lives in Marin County, in the town of Fairfax, and you walk up the steps, it's like two flights to the porch, uh, and you knock on the door, she'll serve you a piece of pie. That she baked. Yeah. And she's, uh, I, I, and there's nothing in it. There's not some like nail in it or something to kill you. I mean, she's filled with warmth and hospitality. Yeah. Which makes it even better. Yeah, which makes it even better. And she's real and she's still out there working. As are we. Yeah. Unfortunately. Beans Morocco is one of my favorites of hers. Have you seen that one? Beans Morocco. Yeah. It's just, it was like our crumb. It just nothing happened. Uh, the Great Bruce McCall. I th uh, the Great Bruce McCall, this is DeSoto, discovers the Mississippi. <laughs> uh, he had a passion for, for scale, for things that were too big, for enormous Zeppelins and bul Bulgemobile was one of his car, mm -hmm. you know. And cars, because he worked in the auto industry yeah, for years right. before he uh, came to New, uh, to New York. He worked in the bullpen of a firm that did illustrations for Detroit. And he lived in Canada, in Windsor, Ontario, just across the lake. And they sent all these illustrations in, and he drew cars year in and year out until he got sick of it and wound up being an art director and a creative director on the Mercedes account right. and was sent to Germany for three years. Not as punishment, but to run the Mercedes account for an agency called McCaffrey and McCall. Yeah. Uh, Wayne McLaughlin's great painting. Wonderful. Poland by rail. <laughs> Perhaps you can see what's going on in this mm -hmm. picture. <laughs> So it's between the tracks. Such a cheap gag and such a great illustration. It's, it's coming right at you. It's brilliant. Yeah. Right. Wayne paints, uh, uh, I spoke to Wayne recently. Wayne paints uh, uh, paintings for track and field, not track and field, uh, field and stream. Right. Not track and field, that's a whole different a magazine. Really talented. Field yeah. and stream and outdoor magazines. And he's been doing that for years. And while he paints, he lives up in New Hampshire. He listens to Rush Limbaugh every day. And he loved this book so much, he told me the other day, that he mailed a copy to Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> and I thought, well, who am I to criticize him mailing it to Rush Limbaugh? That's one more copy. I'm very happy he did that. And uh, if Rush Limbaugh reads it Only on the air, it. or if yes. he tears it yeah. up on the air, then I'm happy about that too. But uh, my first reaction was, you are kidding. You listen to him every day. How can you work? A great lampoon cover by Mara McAfee. Yeah. Heterosexual. Look at that, <coughs> the two of them. Look this is the Emily Prager. Yeah. Who is a author whose books are probably somewhere in this store. Look at the quality of the illustration. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> now, I, I'm very pained when I look at this. There's a, it's, it's, of course, a steroid thing, and it's from 1976. Were you there when this came out? Yeah. yeah. And all I could think That's of is cool. how difficult it must have been for that model to have to stand there. I look at her face, and I think she's saying, I can't believe I'm doing this. It was a consistent experience when people modeled for Lampoon. The for the they were yeah. often quite, or not told what it was for. The doctors and lawyers issue. This was rather late. This is 1986, I think. Yeah. My goodness. 
Have you have you, have you seen this before? No, never. Yeah. You had wisely left. Yes. Some years before. Yeah. The uh, the demise was not pretty. Of course, the vengeance issue. This was during the Iran hostage crisis, and the this really had a tremendous cathartic uh, uh, effect on a lot of people. But I looked at it and I kept thinking, that's an Arab, not a Persian. They've got it wrong. Yeah. And I, uh, somebody, somebody gave the wrong art direction yeah. to, the, uh, to the artist. It wouldn't have happened in the old days. And I, It wouldn't have happened in the no. old days, right? Doug Kenny would not have made that mistake. And still, it's a, you know what? It's a great painting. Of course, the 3D issue, that's Stevie Wonder. Starring the Marx Brothers. It's, it was a great issue. Was Anyone is issue. Uh, there's no, uh, We didn't reproduce any of this, but if you can find this issue online, it comes with a set of 3D glasses, and you can read the entire magazine in 3D. It's true. It was, it's very difficult to read it without the glasses. And Mona, and because Thanksgiving's coming, I thought we'd have one of. Ron Haugie's Thanksgiving cover from his 52 uh. New Yorker covers that weren't accepted by the New Yorker, which are in this book. Yeah. And uh, this is one of them. And, of course, Christmas. This is a Michael O'Donoghue concept and a Frank Springer cover. It's a yeah. eat death bloated lackey of the capitalist toy mongers. It really said it was the first full Michael Gross issue uh, when he became art director yeah. in the end of 1970 and it really set the tone for what the Lampoon was going to look like after the first three issues, a few issues which were messy to say the least and that's it and there's the not actual size cover again so that's the visual stuff do we have anything else you want to tell them about how you worked in the Strand again? <laughs> or? No no, I have to uh, say, I love this book. I think it's extraordinary to, to have been there. It would never have occurred to me, and I think that, you know, the, some of the people who put the book together confessed the same thing, that this period could be summarized as successfully as Rick did it. And I think one of the things that makes the book great, and we're here shilling for the book, let's be honest. But one of the things that I love about the book is that one of the things that Rick did is he got people to write about other people. So you have a very unusual, I don't know about you, but I tend to find histories of you know, uh, the cool jazz era or bebop or something, fairly unsatisfying compared to the stuff itself. And I said, in, tell the truth. Yeah, in this case, what he did was he got people to write quite interestingly about one another. And I think also what makes the book so great is that the book made me realize for the first time something I'd never quite grasped, which was what made the Lampoon great was the artwork. The writing was fun, and it was great to see good, good funny writing, and I was proud to be part of it. But the New Yorker has good funny writing, and there's good funny writing elsewhere. The, what made the, the Lampoon unique and wonderful was this extraordinary combination of really, really talented people like Rick and Sam and so on, and, and fairly decent writers. And also the, the wonderful touch of for parody that Michael and Peter Kleinman and other art directors mm -hmm. had. It wasn't, a great, it wasn't really a heralded job because their job was to disappear. I remember Bruce McCall did a, a, um, a, a, a supermarket insert in, in the Jefferson Democrat Republican, which was a Sunday newspaper parody that was more exceptional because of its scale than anything else. It was an entire fat Sunday newspaper parodied. I mean, the, the, it, it was a... It was kind of giantism in humor terms. But, but Bruce McCall's ma magazine insert I still s makes me smile yeah. at 3 in the morning. It it's was a, brilliant. It's, it was like a su supermarket insert in any Sunday paper with the meat for sale. And the, uh, it yeah. was really, it's a, indescribable. The, the slogan indescribable. on the cover, he was also a very good writer. I mean, he is also a very good writer. Yeah. The slogan on the cover was Swilmart, where quality is a slogan, in quotes. Which is sort of, I mean, all these decades later, right. kind of hard to beat. The man who was creative director uh, at an advertising agency is yeah. at the same time making these paintings and of, coming of up with these slogans, which are parodying his own business. Right. It was, that Everything was, was that Swill was branded. It was Swillomatic for the gadgets, and there was Swill meats for the luncheon yeah. meat and stuff. And the paintings were the luncheon sublime. meats were amazing. Unbelievably great. I still remember the pinkness of them. But that's what I have to say. That's what, why, why you must rush... 
today and buy not one but many copies is because the mm -hmm. artwork is so great and Rick got a, had a, got a wonderful rhythm going right, with people writing about one another. It happened to be that an artist was creating this book so artwork was a priority with Appropriately. me. Appropriately. Uh, and I found out that all the writers really used a lot of art. That they, they would do parodies and the parodies would be filled with art and there would be parodies of comic books or comic strips or there'd be parodies of uh, war stories and they'd need an il illustration for that so that uh, they were constantly commissioning amazing art and uh, and the cartoon you mentioned the New Yorker and uh, the uh, New Yorker used to be great because of their cartoons yeah and everyone wonders, with the exception of Sam and a few other people, everyone wonders what's going on with the New Yorker cartoons. But we won't get into that subject. Maybe somebody will write a book about it. <laughs> Don't get Sam started. We have another, yeah. there's another Lampoon artist here, Stan Mack. Oh, the great who Stan everyone Mack. knows uh, from uh, the Village Voice from 20 years of doing uh, Stan Mack's real life funnies. And uh, Stan has just come in in the back. Yeah. Um, Old dialogue guaranteed verbatim. That's right. To a great lens to. Yeah. To a fair, right? Yeah. It was there was a sort of gleefulness to doing yeah. these things, to knowing that it was slightly offensive what you would do, or no, or, or completely offensive. Yes. And the if it was only slightly offensive, it wasn't good enough. Right. And but it was also I felt that we were after hypocrisy wherever we saw it, and it wasn't just the. Uh, the, uh, that we were after the right side of the spectrum, we were after the left side of the spectrum too. And it wasn't just that, it was the culture, the prevailing culture that we wanted to savage with satire, it was the counterculture, which we thought, were, we thought left-wing loonies were just as bad as right-wing loonies. And we know that the world is filled with them. So we took out after both sides, and it was as if we all had a, a hypocrisy detectors well, and went after it. One of the things I loved about Stan, I love about your work, and I really loved uh, um, the, the, the real life funnies, the idea of it was that it really wasn't about trying to make people laugh. There was a novelistic quality to it, and one of the things that, that baffled the hell out of Maddie, which was so rewarding to us, was that there were things that he understood were funny, and there were things he understood were commercial. He really understood the commercial stuff better than the funny stuff. But if it was overtly funny, I bet he loved Mona for that reason. He got it. Oh, yeah. it, was it was supposed to be a woman, but in fact it was, right? So that was funny. But the thing about it was that it didn't break its neck to be hilarious, like Stan Mac's Real Life Funnies were, and therefore they became far more interesting and textured and unexpected. It wasn't humor in a sort of stand-up humor sense. It was something else. Right. It was really wonderful. I think the uh, lights are telling us something, which yes. is we can take some questions and then uh, they want us out of here. So, yes? It's not so much a question, but it's, it's interesting how reality catches up with things in the lampoon. Um, reality catches up without irony. That show, America's Top Model, did an episode where they had their model wannabes posing as women who'd been brutally murdered. And it's kind of like play dead, only it wasn't yeah. funny, and one of the models became very traumatized by it. But when they showed the, the horrible judges saying, oh, you look so beautiful here, and they show the picture, and it's right. like someone with their head half caved in. So anyway, it's just it's kind of funny how Lampoon understood. Yeah. Because yeah. so, yeah. it wasn't really funny. Yeah, no. what amazes me is, is how going back to the issues that I have, looking over them, of how, how lastingly funny the things are. The cartoons that come to mind, like the men, a bunch of men sitting at a lunch counter with a sign over it saying, thank you for not vomiting. <laughs> I mean, every time I look at that, it still, it still gets me. Who did it? And, <laughs> and then the, the racial issue, where they had Luraline Wallace... Uh, and and uh, eating eating uh, black folk, saying you know you know these these black radicals ain't that tough. Yeah. And I mean that stuff was just. Yeah. I didn't print that story. It was a little too gruesome. You oh, you didn't put it in your book. I didn't put it. in No, mine. that was really gruesome. I was gonna put it in their book. The ebony, the ivory, right? Ivory uh, Ivory yeah. magazine, yeah. which yeah. was yeah. a a takeoff on yeah. Ebony yeah. magazine. Ladies White is beautiful. Yeah. Kate Smith, yeah, I know. Yeah. Cover story on Kate Smith. <laughs>